Welcome back to Tyson Tidbits. In this video, we will review the heart rate monitor sample and also the Tyson Advanced UI sample that gives you several UI components that you can reuse in your projects. Show really fast, and I'm talking about like really fast, uh, some of the samples, and then we're going to be done. I probably end up talking a lot today. So, when you create a new project, we have been creating templates. You can also use samples. So that's what I wanted to show. Again, you're going to be picking um, the platform that you're going to go for and the type of application, native or, or web. And then depending on that, it's going to show you different samples. So there are like two that I would like to check today. So the first one is going to be the sensor, just because we already created something like that and the heart rate monitor. So we're going to create that. And then we're going to name it 17. Uh, and then we can run this one. Um, make it run on our emulator. Takes a second. And then here it is. So this one obviously is a little bit cooler because not only is showing you a number, it literally is showing you an animation. And that animation. I know for sure that it changes depending on the speed of uh, like the heart. So you can see that it's going slower and it begins to tell you uh, if it's zero, it, it says that, that there's a problem reading. It assumes that that's the case. But if it's too high and you can determine what is high, it's going to start telling you that there's there's a problem. Okay, it's 220, I thought that it was 200. So you can tell that it changes because at this point, like, well, you may be in actual danger. So uh, then, then you see that it's a little bit cooler. So uh, this one, if you download Tyson Studio, you can use immediately the sample and you're going to be able to check the application. You're going to see that this one is quite different because uh, instead of like coding everything there is literally defining dif different modules and doing different things here that are in the core. So it's having more like an MVC uh, uh, application. So everything is a little bit more organized, uh, but, but it, well, it was going to take me longer to do all that. So you see here in the model, that uh, it's defining everything that has to do with the event, but you are going to have um, you're going to have advantage that it has some additional code like the vibrations and the animation that is added there. So it's kind of cool that since you already understood the basics of what it is doing, how the sensors work, then get a little bit more ahead and just start creating this. The other sample that I wanted to show you, and that one I'm not going to open it because it takes a little bit longer and I was prepared for that, is this one that is the Tyson Advanced UI, UI components. So this one is a cool one. is because it shows you a lot of the things that you can do in terms of presenting your applications in your uh, Galaxy Watch. So uh, when it deploys... So here you have a long list of things that you can, that you can check. And there are some things that show you how you can show things on a smaller screen and still have like nice interaction. For example, in this case, how would you be able to present a, a photo gallery? Oh, click on the one thing, sorry. And go back. And then you're also going to see things like the pop-ups that it could be something with a text, for example, like that. So like a messages, to toasts that you're going to, to be able to send to your uh, users, depending, something like that. And also things like these, well, controls that, that is quite useful too, like uh, toggle buttons, for example. How to do that, it already has the code for that. So if you are already creating an application for um, Tyson, for the wearable devices, and you don't know how to do all these things, you would just go to the sample, and you would just come and check the code that they are doing, that they are using for uh, these different con controls and components, and that saves you a lot of time there. So you don't have to uh, recreate everything. So, like for example, where, where are you scro scrolling? So if you have a lot of text to present, 
then this is how you would do it. And then you would take advantage of the vessel, which I told you that it was one of my favorite uh, things in these watches. And then another thing that is, for example, graphs that you can that you can display here, or something like this one that is a dynamic graph. In this case, I do know for sure about start that I think it's creating a graph with random data. So it's kind of like showing the, the graph there uh, with random data points. So, and it just keeps going until you say stop. And let me see if I can find it really here, bar graph, if it's here, if it's something somewhere else. Is it here? I missed it. There's one that, that it has like a small 3D model. So where is it that interactive? I missed it. I don't know if it's here. Ah, oh, here, interactive 3D. So you can have a small 3D model that has been displayed there and it shows you how to load everything or uh, this other one that is the cover flow. So that would be kind of cool if you have a long list of pictures and that's it. So that's very much in terms of the, the interactive part. Thank you for watching the video. Please let us know what other topics you would like us to cover in future workshops and tutorials.